but they don't really know how to do it. And let me tell you, they need older women teaching them how to do this kind of thing. You know, and I mean, I heard a preacher one time who was very threatened uh, by my wife because people in his church must have been listening to her, uh, who was, you know, teaching against this idea of, you know, older women teaching younger women. And he, he literally went to the verse in 1 Corinthians where it's talking about prophecy and it's giving rules for prophesying and speaking in tongues. And it tells the women to keep silence for it's not permitted for them to speak. And it says if they will learn anything, and it's not just talking about the subject at hand and what they're dealing with and things in the church. It says if they will learn anything, it says uh, let, let them ask their husbands at home. And so it was just like if women want to learn anything, they should ask their husbands. And it's like, okay, that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. You know what? I don't care how gently women lead other women. You know what? It says for a husband to be the one who teaches his wife. You know, some people get a little offended by this, but notice that it does not say, ask the other women in the church. Hey, you want to improve your marriage today? Ask your husband what you're supposed to do. Hey, I want to know, you know, how to make this or do this or where to go or the homeschool or whatever. Ask your husband. Don't ask another lady. And it sure doesn't say, hey, you as a lady, start teaching all the other ladies what to do. Right. No, notice it says in verse 35. Let, let's read it again because I'm reading the Bible. I don't know what you're reading. Look what it says. If they will learn anything. Right. Now, if you ask a Calvinist, they might not know what anything means. But let me tell you what anything means. Anything. And so, you know, I, I feel so bad for, you know, a lot of young women who are around just bad teaching like that. Look, folks, she's the most important person on the planet to me. I love her more than all of you combined times a trillion. <laughs> and throw my children on top of that. It's like, I love her more than anything. She's the greatest thing ever. You know, women are wonderful. There's nothing about women that makes me think, ugh. You know what? I love that. I, I love women. God created the greatest thing ever. And, and then for just some foolish single punk who doesn't know any better, but just to blindly follow the ramblings of a lunatic, I feel so sorry for the women uh, who are in churches like that, married to men like that. What an absolute nightmare your home must be. This is the, 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 the best way to describe love, is putting someone else before you. We see even Jesus Christ, he laid down his life for ours, right? That's the greatest example of love, here in his love, that he laid down his life for us. The Bible makes it clear that being, having love is being selfless. And we see if you want to love your husband, you have to decide to be selfish, selfless. You have to decide to put your spouse before you. And this goes both ways. This isn't just applied for women. As husbands, we also should love our wives. We should decide to put our wives before ourselves and to give satisfaction to our wives. But we see it's, it's a two-way street. Marriage is a picture of not, what can I get from this person, but how can I serve the other? Marriage is a picture of two servants trying to serve each other constantly. It's a great, it's a great thing when it works out. It's a great thing when both people are trying to serve the other person because it's just constant blessing after blessing after blessing. And you know, when you're selfless, when you serve someone else, you're not expecting anything in return. So you're just constantly blessing the other person, being selfless, no matter how they act. No matter how they are. Oh, my husband was a jerk to me tonight. But I let him get his rest because I love him. You know, my husband said something rude to me, but I still gave him his dinner. I still respected him. I still gave him a kiss. I still gave him his attention. I still gave him everything he desires, not because he deserves it, but because I'm going to put him before me. I'm selfless. We see, love. I, I could tell a bunch of stories right now of, uh, like, a lot of new IFB dating stories. They're pretty funny. There's a reason there's so many single guys. <laughs> and, I'm, and their prospects aren't looking real good until they start fixing some of these things about themselves. But it's like, I hear what some of these guys do on their dates and dates that have gone bad and just like, are you trying to guarantee that you never get married?